Do you want to make a? I would. Okay, let's let's go. I was not going to be supporting Mr. Hasty's motion. However, make no mistake. I do not support the actions of any board member, in my opinion, who exercises poor judgment. While I and several other board colleagues believe that Mr. Racker exercised poor judgment in the way he handled his health insurance obligations to the district, he has not committed an offense which requires his removal as board president or resignation from the Board of Education. From the standpoint of district finances, it is important to note that the district has lost no money according to administration as a result of Mr. Lacker's actions. For me, the issue was one of intent. I am satisfied that Mr. Lacker never intended to abandon his personal financial obligation to the district. In fact, as of today, he has no overdue payments and is in fact paid in full. It is also noteworthy to mention that Mr. Walker has publicly apologized and expressed what I feel is sincere remorse for his actions. It was wrong. After a stellar career of 22 years serving this district, I can only imagine, as one human being to another, the embarrassment that he and his family are experiencing. Again, I believe that removal proceedings are unwarranted and would create nothing more than a continuing unnecessary public spectacle. I am aware fully aware that this episode has shaken the confidence of some members of our community in this Board of Education. I do think moving forward that our internal controls in various areas must be reviewed and strengthened so the community is once again assured that Marshall schools are well managed. And I have to compliment Dr. Costa who is moving in that direction. While Mr. Locker was subject of this motion, was the subject of this motion, it is my feeling that we have been very tolerant of the poor judgment and behavior exhibited by another member of this board. I want it to be perfectly clear. I do not excuse the poor judgment of Mr. Locker but I do believe that the community has a right to know the environment in which we have been operating. Those of you who know me and know my record know that I have never, ever spoken against anyone during my time in office. It is not my style or my practice. However, I find myself unable to remain silent. Mr. Hasty's actions in the last several years have been antagonistic and have interfered with and have compromised the board's ability to function as a leadership team. He has shown a disregard for executive session and he has certainly breached confidentiality. He has chosen portions of executive session that he unilaterally decided that the public had a right to know, and he has shared them to perhaps further his own agenda and portray himself as a champion of the people. He has violated principles of board governance by deciding to publicly share emails between board members, and most recently, one that our foreign officer determined should not be disclosed. His behavior has caused a climate of mistrust to the point that several board members, including myself, are apprehensive and reluctant to freely speak 
in executive session. I have never experienced that in my life. I know that several people on this board have tried very, very hard to counsel and work with him to change behaviors as they felt that he was bright and could, could contribute positively. He showed no remorse and instead continues, continued the divisive actions. Despite members of this community wondering why our feelings were never made public, it was a conscious choice, and I must tell you, certainly my choice. We have deliberately chosen up to this point not to publicly discuss his behavior because, quite frankly, it is a distraction from the important work that this board must do. You heard a bit of it tonight from Chris Ann. I can't tell you how sorry I am to have to make this speech, but I feel that the public at some point has the right to know. I thank you. Well, that's interesting. Um, so after I bring a, a, a motion to remove him from president, now all of a sudden this is coming out. So I find it kind of interesting that you choose now. So I guess it's the typical circle the wagons amongst the uh, board members here. Um, but I'll continue to do the work that I do because I do it for the children. I don't do it for myself. Obviously, I'm not getting paid, and I think uh, what I'm doing is right for the citizens of New Rochelle. I'm looking out for the taxpayers and for the children here, and I think I continue to do that. Um, I've asked uh, on more than one occasion for us to have a conversation about open meeting laws, but you continue to refuse to do that. So um, as far as um, you know, as far as you're concerned as a board, you've, you've, you've unilaterally decided what is right and what is not right for it. Uh, from a review standpoint. And if we've had our meetings with the with open meeting law, I think we would understand exactly what is and what can and cannot be said in executive session and shared. Jeffrey, you said that a number of times. I'm sorry. I just have to respond to this. And what the community might not know is that the board actually had a retreat to discuss um, what is appropriate to do during executive session. And we had the general counsel of the New York State School Boards Association come to speak to us about it and explain to us what uh, the difference was between the um, commissioner of open meeting and uh, the commissioner of education's um, uh, position was. And um, you chose to walk out of the room at that point. You would not sit there and listen to it. Oh. So, and every single person who's in this room would, I'm sorry, who's in the board would remember that. So I just have to say, I am offended that you said that. It has been so difficult the past few years. I'm sorry. I just, sorry for the outburst. Okay, so that's, that's just, totally, you know, just, just, you just know, you characterized, because I mentioned no. early, on that retreat that I had to leave early, so I happened to leave at that no, time. No, he walked out and walked yes. the halls and then came yes. back in when he was yes, done. Yes, I left early. Thank you. That's a, that so, is absolutely so, not true. So, okay. yeah, exactly. Further so, and, just, and also, just, just, to, just, to, just to respond, can I just respond to that real quick? Because the New York State School Board Association is the lobbying association for the school boards in New York State. It's not an authority on um, what executive sessions is. What, if, 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 let me finish my statement, Mr. Uh, Mr. Elkin. The Committee on Open Government, run by Robert Friedman, who's been running it for 25 years, is the authority on what's, uh, what's involved in that. And it's the same rules that the New York State Assembly and Senate follow. I think what you're, you're failing to um, see in this discussion is that the commissioner of education is the one that decides what's appropriate behavior for school board members. So even if Robert Freeman said it's okay for you to release something because it doesn't violate the open meetings law or the Freedom of Information Act, that doesn't mean that there couldn't be another reason why you shouldn't do that, that possibly it could undermine um, your school board's ability to govern. And the it, commissioner, why don't you take a look at the commissioner of education's opinions on that? Do we have any further discussion? Dr. Davis, did you want to, I know you started in on this before, did you want to continue? Or I was we... just, I, the investigatory nature of what was brought up in the first um, motion was what got me curious. 
because we're investigating the code of ethics and there was a section of it mentioned about oh, this. Oh, the section oh, of it about confidentiality says yeah, an well, officer or employee shall not disclose confidential information required by him or her in the course of his or her official duties or and so on and so on. And if there was going to be an investigation, which I thought that that was what the first motion was asking the commissioner to do, then I thought that there should be a full investigation, not only of the code of ethics that may have been broken by Mr. Locker, but the code of ethics that may be broken by any board member. Do you want to make that motion? No, the, we're just... The, the motion already didn't pass. Yeah, it didn't pass. But, I mean, <laughs> okay. Make a motion. If that's and what if, you want, you any want, you further want comments? Any further um, comments from your colleagues about this topic as we're discussing uh, the code of conduct? And, and the reason we are discussing it is because it was brought up by Mr. Hasty. So we're, you know, many of us feel strongly about the confidentiality breaches, and you know, because you brought it up, we wanted to address them. I don't know if I want to make a motion, but I do want to make a request to add on a future agenda very soon that we really need to be addressing, looking at all of our policies and possibly adding policies to address board conduct as well as more um, review of yeah. how we can hold ourselves accountable. Because quite honestly, if we're not holding ourselves accountable to following our own policies, then how do we as leaders expect to hold the people that we govern accountable for what they should be doing? So if we're not accountable to ourselves, and how can the public expect us to hold the people that we're responsible for accountable? So I think we need to really assess what we're doing as leaders of this district and make sure we come up with measures that we can hold our, ourselves accountable to so that we can expect everyone to follow our lead. And, yeah, um, as long and as it's not just for our friends. Like, I mean, I think we have policies in place. We've chosen to, to, to let them, you know, because people who we are on our side, or I, I just feel that I, one of my frustrations, I, and I, I, I in no way, I, I echo everybody's con discontent with the behavior of Jeffrey. I absolutely do. But the reality is, as somebody who has also sat on this board and watched a board act collectively rather than, in, and, and, and who's my friend and who, who does this, we, we, like, if we have policies in place, do we really need to have a new policy to implement policy? We don't, I mean, we don't hold, we, don't hold, we have to hold right. everybody we have to accountable for those policies. Exactly. We only so choose to hold those accountable to, to that, that, that we don't like. Okay. Right. We have to hold everybody on the same benchmark. That it should not matter who you are, whether you like, or whether you have to hold everybody on the same benchmark. This is for sure. It does matter who you are. Okay? It all depends on who you are. About okay, it should not. It does, and we know that for a fact. Any further comment? All right. Let's go on to new business then. Or 